Learn to be super successful. Subscribe to my channel, me head. Smoke this fire. The most educated of the poorest. Where the smoke this fire? There's some truth in every lie. As Mr. Glassos used to tell me. Comments, questions about um, Marcus. Yes, sir. You can hear the regret in his voice. Oh. I mean, regret's a motherfucker. I haven't talked about default yet. Why you're all going to fail, potentially. I'll talk about that t tomorrow and the next day. Default's a motherfucker. Because for many of you, you're going to default back to your old modus operandi. No matter how hard you fight it. Most of you in this room can't sever it, it, it's, it transcends, I used to use the analogy, cutting loose the umbilical cord. But, I mean, it's so much greater than that. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry I ever used that fucking analogy. But it's like, uh, you've seen these movies when they, uh, uh, like an alien, and when they, the, the, the octopus thing jumps on your face, and then uh, tentacles going down up your nose and down your ears and your throat. And that. Okay. You're attached to poorness in so many ways you can't even define it. Your eyes have been opened up a lot here, but there's a whole bunch of other shit that, uh, it, you know, it's sucking the life out of you. It's sucking the blood out of you. Um, the, uh, it's sucking the spirit out of you. And it's replacing it with direct or indirect regret. And that's a, that's a bitch. That's a bitch. And the, uh, you know, when I was a public, head of a public company, there I'm accused in hindsight. Uh, I made three or four acquisitions I shouldn't have made. Probably didn't. I probably, you know. But I was like you. I wanted to spend the money. Uh, and I wasn't taking money out as we made acquisitions. Uh, but one time I had to buy a company. I didn't have to. I bought a company that had all the infrastructure we didn't have. And all the, our IT guys and all these guys said, oh, we can build this shit over the next three to seven years. I'm talking about the next three to seven fucking days. <laughs> what are you talking to me about? Years. And so I bought it. I probably paid 50% more than I should have. It transformed the company, okay? Um, the, he, he, you can sound, you hear the regret in his voice. I mean, the, um, and I still remember go, you know, going to his house. It's a cabin. It's a very, not his, his parents, a, a very exclusive log cabin. But it is a log cabin. A log cabin. And stuff that's obvious to me that I just know that I've told David over the years. I mean, I don't even have to think about it. You know, it's like brushing my teeth and the, um, because I've seen smarter guys than you fail trying to do it, you know? And, uh, and, and as he said, he chose to be the womb to the tomb in, in real estate development. Now, if you just take a, if you're land, he's land banking, he's buying tens of thousands of acres for the future. They're not, you're not buying land on leverage. You want, you want 1,100 acres? You pay for them. Okay, that ties up capital. Okay. <clears throat> That's assuming that you can get the land programmed or permitted for what you want. Then a new mayor comes in town. Fuck, we don't want any of that shit anymore. So now you can stick the land 1,100 acres up your ass. What are you going to do with it? And then the green piece gets on your ass. And a uh, bag of bones gets on your ass because they won't let them uh, build a casino or whatever there. But, uh, okay. So now you finally figure out something to do with that. But you, that may be four years later. Like he said, it'd take him five years to get out of all the shit because he's got commitments. Okay. So now you get it permitted. Okay. Now you've you got to deal with the local government, the council, and you can't get shit committed, uh, approved here in this council. Nothing. If God came down and gave him a, a trillion dollars, I've committed a billion pounds to this, to this area in running for office. A billion. I know I can do it. Nobody's bought a million pounds here, let alone a billion. Okay, so you get it permitted, and then uh, the, uh, um, and another mayor comes in and decides they want all the roofs to look like this. This has had the roof changed five times. We have a foundation here that could take a, a nuclear bomb. Instead of six inches of cement, we have three feet. Why? Because I pissed off the council. 
during the middle of the steel shortage to go out and get more steel because they changed the angle. I had to go get uh, workers from Poland. Anything that can go wrong, and every step of the construction project is like that. You put in, uh, you put in uh, brass pipes. The law changes, you gotta have copper pipes. Okay, and then, of uh, course, now we're all trying to save megawatts and shit like that, and you gotta plug into the grid, and oh God, it goes on and on and on. Whereas if you're just in land banking, I can sell the land, but if you're committed to de develop the land, in a certain way, and then uh, people want it to look like the forest, if you're where he is. It's got to look natural, unnatural. It's a shitty business. That's not the business TK's in. TK is a mini flipper. He takes on a project, he restores it, out the fucking door. Any qu other questions? Yes, sir. He talks about doing an asset deal first. Could you give an example of like what an asset, asset deal would be like in the healthcare or? Sure, you're buying, uh, you're buying a radiology practice from a doctor. He's got radiology machines, MRI machines, that kind of shit, right? I only want to buy the shit, okay? Uh, that's an asset purchase. You have no liability for past, present, or future liabilities, as opposed to the way that you're gonna to wanna to buy because you're stupid. You're going to buy, uh, we're buying this asshole's uh, dental practices. He wants to sell the building, he wants to sell every fucking thing in the package of shares that's owned by the shares. Arguably, if you have any licenses required for his business, the licenses should pass with the company when it's a share deal. It, wouldn't, it may, may or may not pass when it's an asset deal. If all the licenses are in his name and he wants to walk out the fucking door, okay, obviously you don't want that. But... Um, the, as he said uh, towards the end, he kind of mumbled it, that you know, he, he recommended that the audience in that group do asset deals. But you can't always do an asset deal. Sometimes you have to do a share deal. And then when you're getting ready to go public, a week before the public, some little old lady uh, in a wheelchair shows up at your lawyer's office with a share certificate from 1641. And she owns a third of the company because you bought a share deal. And they told you it was clean. So you got, you know, when I say you got to get rid of her, I don't mean it that way. Well, you, you got a, a problem. You know, how are you going to, you know, and, and just by uh, uh, the 87-year-old woman has got the three best fucking lawyers in the world. Just by accident. And they stick you up. And nobody feels sorry for you. <clears throat> they feel sorry for the little old lady in a wheelchair. I've had people die, you know, signing documents. I've had people die, you know, it's been in the family 300 years and we're going to go public. And we're going to talk about IPOs, not the, not the answer to anything. And all of a sudden, uh, <clears throat> she dies. And now, when she was the head of the trust, you have to deal with 17 people. Twelve of them don't want to sell anything. Five of them, they went from $500 trillion to a nickel. And then the deal never gets done. But your board must, not should, must have this kind of experience. If you haven't been fucked at the close, if you haven't been raped, sodomized at the close, then you don't have the right guys and gals. And just because they look good on paper, they have to be more than just look good on paper. You want people that have been bloodied. You know, you, you want the people that have been, you know, strung up like the, the fucking Huns to the Romans in 42 BC. That's what you want. And will you relate to them as individuals? No. They're going to look at you, what the fuck? I got shoes older than this little prick. And even though, now, my gen they talk that way. But one generation behind me, they think it, but they don't talk it. But they'll still rape you. The strong in the QLA model get stronger and richer. The weak make a few shekels. That's Jewish money. But I mean, brutes like the Goombas 
do well with this model. And they're not the brutish, they're not the most gangsters guys I got. They're in the middle of the pack. Tony would like to be the top gangster, but he's just in the middle of the pack. I mean, I've got some ruthless mother, I mean, shit. If your grandmother had one breath left in her mouth, they'd stick their dick in her mouth. And they're super rich. There's a theme here, remember, sensitivity equals poverty. There's a theme. Remember, I was told 40 years ago, if you, had, if you were a really tough penny, you'd be the first trillionaire on the planet. That's how good this model is. If I had 60 years like uh, Warren the Buffett, what's, what's above a trillion? Whatever's above a trillion, I'd be. You saw the numbers. They're irrefutable. And yet you still won't do it. You heard him at the very end say, build a personal foundation, which is step one. Now, there's six steps to that one step, but anyway. Because um, something, you know, uh, your mom, God forbid, your mom will get dementia. You, uh, we had, and I, I can I, I cry when I say this, we had a guy's nine-year-old daughter get knocked up and raped and got pregnant, nine-year-old daughter. <sighs> anyway, so he, he was off the rails. He spent the rest of his life trying to kill, find the two guys that did it to her and kill him. That's what he spent the rest of his life. As he should, I might add. So whatever can go wrong will go wrong. But you still got to go, you just keep running towards the gunfire. Your arm, like in the, you know, these sci-fi movies, boom, they blow you off his arm and he's still going. Like the uh, uh, Terminator movie, you know. It's on boom, then it's the boom, it's head boom, and you gotta just keep going forward. Ooh, I can just see the bag of bones lose half his head. Fuck. Anything else about him? But he was gonna be the one. He was my uh, charger, like the girls, I'm, I'm putting words in the girl's mouth now. The, the guy in the white charger that sweeps you off your feet and you ride into the sunset into happiness. He was that guy, supposedly. Didn't work out. Little, little mice showed up like Peter, you know. Anything else? Oh, he doesn't have time for exercise anymore. So he walks on a uh, treadmill at four kilometers. All the guys that do this, the, the, the average speed where you can still type and talk is four kilometers an hour. I can't do it that fast. I can't type. I can only do it at about two and a half kilometers an hour because of lack of coordination. Um, and he's on the treadmill six to ten hours a day. Even you would lose 50 pounds. Because you're burning calories ten hours a day. The first, the first few uh, days, a few weeks, you fall off, you hurt yourself, you cut your head open, because it's, it's not that easy. It sounds easy, but it's not. And I've tried it, believe me, I, I don't do that. I don't try that anymore. I still do the treadmill, but not when I'm trying to do my, this shit. Um, and, uh, but he doesn't, he doesn't exercise, he skis twice a year. And uh, he says skiing, just like allegedly skiing, is no fun. If you're not, the, the fastest, straightest line down a, a slope is a straight line. And you, you're going 60, 70 miles an hour. But, uh, but I mean, so that's, that's, he doesn't have that exercise regimen. Uh, but you're on a treadmill. I've got some other guys, uh, not, I have 40, 50 guys that do the treadmill thing. Um, and they, the guy, now they set up, they have stand up desks. You can buy uh, uh, that setup. They're already set up for that because it's become popular. A lot of guys on Wall Street were the first to do it. They didn't have time to go, you know, um, exercise. Uh, and I was on Wall Street in the era of the three martini lunch. It was considered civil, humane, and not drunkenness to have three drinks at lunch. So I, I sat through a gazillion three, three martini lunches. Now, I had uh, 17 or 18 uh, meetings a couple of years ago, in, uh, showbiz for my TV series. 
Half of them couldn't get a cup of coffee. No coffee. A couple of times I went across to Starbucks to get me a coffee. And I like cold coffee, so by the time it got to me, it was cold. The bottled water can't be in plastic. It's got to be in glass bottles. Half of them, there was no water. I asked one of the senior guys at one of the big talent agencies, uh, told, didn't ask, I can't remember if he told or asked, his assistant to go get a cup of coffee? She said, no. That's not my job description. Now, I've had employees like that, and they're ex-employees. The whole workplace has changed. Work values, being held accountable, has all changed. I'm not going to go through all the people he's gone through in the 10 years, 11 years that I've known him, but he's gone through a shitload of them. Anything else about him? Okay. Goodbye.